Hey, what's up everyone? I am a learning scientist and today I'm going to answer a bunch of questions about learning from Reddit. You ready? Let's go. How do you learn from lectures? You don't. Seriously, lectures just aren't really structured for learning. There's several reasons for this, but don't feel bad if you feel like you're not learning a lot from a lecture. It's not your fault most of the time. It's actually the lecturer's fault. Given that lectures are ubiquitous, what do we do? I think there's three tips that can help everyone learn from lectures. And the first tip is come prepared to learn from the lecture. So if you walk into the lecture knowing nothing about the topic, it's gonna be really hard for you to learn much from it. So you're gonna only pick up kind of the biggest picture ideas, uh, and a lot of the details are probably just gonna be forgotten. So what you wanna do before you go into the lecture is you want to read about that topic for that day or get familiar with some concepts or ideas or familiarize yourself with vocabulary, or um, even try to solve some problems. Any of these things can help you prepare to learn from the lectures. Tip number two is to not take verbatim notes. A lot of people, when they go into the lectures, they think, well, I just gotta like take notes on everything, and so the teacher is spewing stuff, and I'm just writing, 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 writing. That's not a good way of remembering stuff from the lecture. And the problem is that all you're doing is transcribing what the teacher is saying, but you're not actually grappling with what the teacher is saying. So to take better notes during the lecture, you wanna be summarizing things or recapitulating things in a slightly different way. Uh, don't feel like you need to write down everything. You wanna get the big picture ideas and maybe some important points, but part of processing information is to understand what's important and what's not important and to kind of grapple with that distinction. Tip number three is to review the material after the fact. And there's a special way of doing this. So the first thing I want you to do is to take out a blank sheet of paper and try to remember everything you can about that lecture. And after doing that, for even just taking five minutes to do that or 10 minutes to do that, then you wanna look up anything that you've missed, maybe from the other materials that you have. And then you wanna ask yourself some questions. So one good question to ask yourself is, hey, how can I apply this material to problems or situations that might come up? Uh, a different good question to ask is, how does this material relate to other material that I am learning? And the, thir the third tip here is to identify what you still don't know about like what's still confusing here what still doesn't make sense it's gonna prepare you for kind of the next lecture because you have these open questions and maybe you can ask the teacher these questions maybe you can find out the answer on your own but that kind of self-questioning behavior is really important for driving the learning process forward this whole process doesn't have to take a long time it can be 15 20 minutes but it's gonna serve you pretty well, especially if you want to remember the material in the long run. Question number two, let's see. Is it possible for young people to learn complex skills on their own by figuring it out? Or do they need someone with experience to teach them? So the answer to this question depends on what level we're talking about. How skilled do you want to be? And it also depends on how complex the skill is that we're talking about. Before I answer this question, let me ask you a different question. And I think this question is going to help you figure out the answer to the first one. So the question is, can you become a professional tennis player without any coaches? Never, no coaches ever, okay? Can you become a professional chess player without ever having had a coach? The answer, if you're waiting with bated breath here. The answer is no. It's really not possible, or at least it's highly, highly unlikely. Of course, people can learn lots of things on their own. There's lots of great learning material out there. There's online courses and apps and libraries and books and YouTube videos. 
But the key thing with learning skills is how are you going to get feedback? What kind of form does that feedback take? Let me take two examples. Imagine you're trying to learn chess. Now, you can actually learn a lot about chess on your own, right? You can read books, you can play games, and you get some kind of feedback just from playing the game, right? You play a game, you figure out whether you won or lost, and then you can play again. So you can get lots of cycles where you you essentially practice playing chess and you get feedback about how well you did. And you can also have a pretty precise idea about what your ranking is because the ELO ranking is a fairly accurate assessment of your skill. Suppose the complex skill was surgery. Now, maybe you can try to perform surgery on some of your friends, but you can see that in this context, getting practice at performing surgery and getting feedback on that practice is a lot more challenging. In the chess example, you can get lots of cycles of practice with feedback, but in the surgery example, uh, you can't, at least without, you know, serious harm to your friends. But it's not just about the amount of feedback or the kind of cycles of practice and feedback, it's also about the quality of that feedback. So even if you're focused on playing chess and you find out whether you won or lost, that's not the end of the story. Right? You still have to figure out, well, why did I lose? Why did I win? If you're not very good at chess, answering those questions is actually pretty hard. And so that's where someone with experience comes in and can really help you understand, okay, this was the main mistake that you made, or this is the area that you most have to improve in. Is it possible to learn complex skills on your own? Yeah, it's possible, but is it efficient? No. Third question. Is reading informative books for 30 minutes a day enough to learn anything? Anything is a pretty low bar, so I'm going to have to go with yes on this one. The big question here is why are you learning this stuff? Why are you reading these books? If you don't have a specific learning goal in mind, it's going to be a lot like reading the news. You're not going to remember that much about what you read. You're probably going to remember uh, interesting stories. You might remember a few facts and figures, but you're also going to misremember some stuff. But if you have a learning goal, the material that you're reading is going to be related to each other. So day after day, as you're reading this, you're going to be kind of relating the material to each other, which is going to help you learn a little bit quicker. If you want to get the most out of reading out of these 30 minutes, you probably want to do something like what I suggested before for the lectures. You want to prepare to read something first, and then you want to read it actively, you know, ask questions about the material that you're reading, uh, maybe um, identify certain important parts, and then you want to revisit what you read or connect what you read to other things you're learning, this kind of thing. Before you read something, you can even think about what you already know about the topic or write down some questions you might have. Maybe the article will provide answers for you. As you read, you want to be identifying things that you don't understand or things that are really important or things that relate to things that you read a few days ago. And then after you read, you want to revisit the material maybe a few days, a couple of weeks later. You can pull out a blank sheet of paper, visualize your understanding of something, check the parts that you're missing, um, identify more questions again. Of course, if you can apply what you're reading to other things, that's also really helpful. So if you can have a conversation with someone about what you read, or you can take what you read and apply it to your work or apply it to a problem that you have, all of these things can help make what you're reading stick for longer. Question number three. Do you think watching videos is a legitimate way to learn something? Is this a video? I'm gonna have to go with yes on this one. But it depends on what you're learning from the video. The Redditor here points out a very interesting thing, which is that videos can combine words and visuals very effectively. Now, books can do this too, to some degree, but visuals, they can be used well and can be used poorly. So it's not the case that just because there are visuals that it's gonna be more effective. This person says that they believe that it's more efficient to watch videos and less efficient to read, I'm not really sure that that's true. What happens is that it's very easy to watch 
a lot of videos. So if you take an hour or an hour and a half, you can actually watch a tremendous amount of content on some topic, whatever topic you're watching. But just because you've gone through that material doesn't mean that you're actually going to remember it or apply it when you want to apply that knowledge. The feelings that we have about what we learn can often be deceptive. One of the big questions to ask yourself is, how do I know that I've learned something, you know, beyond having watched the video? If you've watched a video, say on sewing, on a new sewing technique or something, and you watch the video and you practice this new technique, and then voila, you can actually do this technique on your own, that's some evidence that you have learned from watching this video. So the video plus the practice means that you have acquired this new skill, this new sewing technique, right? But what if we're talking about information or maybe a concept? So then it becomes a lot trickier to know whether you've learned something from watching this video. For example, what if you watch an extra history episode? Just because you've watched the video doesn't necessarily mean that you've learned much from it. You might feel like you've learned something, but if you test yourself a while later, you might be disappointed in the results. You can actually try this experiment. So if you go to the Extra History channel, what I want you to do is just watch a series of videos on a single topic, and then three weeks later, like two or three weeks later, sit down with a blank sheet of paper and just see how much you remember from watching those videos. If you find it hard to concentrate when you're reading, you might think about how you're reading. So you say like you're five to six sentences in and then you realize, well, I haven't paid attention at all to these five or six sentences. I've got to start over again. Good readers don't just plow forward at the same speed throughout the whole book. What happens is that they kind of dart between different areas. Uh, if you look at their eye movements, they spend more time focused on certain sentences and sometimes they move backwards to check that you know their understanding of something matches with, with um, um, what is being said now. You might try to be a more active reader to take more notes as you're reading and ask yourself more explicit questions as you're reading. It's already great that you can recognize that you're not paying attention, right? When, after you've read a few sentences. So if you can, kind of work and hone that skill so that you realize maybe within a first sentence that, oh man, I didn't really understand the sentence. I should reread it or I should try to understand what's going on here. Um, that can really help you read more effectively. No one says you have to read. If you like watching videos, if it's working for you, then by all means, watch videos. You just wanna make sure that you're watching videos in an effective way. One thing to do is you should avoid probably watching a lot of videos in succession. Uh, it's just too much material to process at once and a lot of it is probably just going to pass through you. Um, uh, you just can't pay attention to all of that stuff at once in, in a short amount of time. Two, you should probably try and be trying to summarize what you're learning and apply what you're learning. And if possible, you should find a way to test yourself about what you've learned. Good luck. Question number four, if you're liking this video, would you click the like button? Okay, the actual question number four, which apps or games can help improve cognitive function? The answer to this question is none, or maybe all. It kind of depends on what you mean by cognitive function. There aren't any brain training apps or kind of cognitive function apps that are going to improve your brain generally. Lots of apps claim they will help and usually there's some evidence that there's something good going on there but once other researchers get a hold of the data and do more rigorous tests a lot of the claims that companies make just kind of fall apart. Usually the, in these studies they don't use very good controls or they don't use very good measures when measuring whether uh, changes have actually taken place. And when researchers try to replicate these studies they almost always just come up short. So there's not any program that's been established like, that is like, hey, this is really going to generally improve your brain. So that's the argument for none. What about the argument for all? If you practice doing something 
you generally get better at it. If you are playing a chess app on your phone and you practice for a few months, let's say, you're going to get better at chess. Maybe not a whole lot better, but you're going to get better at playing chess. So if that's what you mean by improved cognitive function, then yeah, pretty much any experience can help you uh, improve your cognitive function. The chess app is making you better at chess. Now this is another reason why the brain training apps don't really work. Say you're playing a game where you have to identify how many birds are flashed on the screen at once. So you start playing this game and every once in a while these birds flash on the screen. Now over time you're actually going to get better at identifying the number of birds on the screen, but um, that's not going to translate into better attention generally. Again, you get good at what you practice. So what you're practicing is identifying objects that are quickly flashed on the screen. And so if we test you for that, and we test you, say, using some other object, say like basketballs or something that are flashed on the screen, you're going to perform better than someone who hasn't been using these brain training games. But you are not going to pay more attention in class than someone who hasn't been playing these brain training games. Last question, does the brain of a 14 year old learn things faster? I presume you mean faster than an adult brain and not say faster than a horse's brain. There's no doubt that brains change as we age, but the question is about whether those changes have a significant effect on learning. And the answer I think is not really, or at least it's complicated enough that there is not a simple, clear answer. There are certain cognitive abilities that young people uh, on average have more of. So for instance, young adults are better than older adults at abstract reasoning. Older adults tend to have a harder time remembering where they learned something from. So that's called like the source of the information. And that can make it hard to assess whether that information is true or not. If anything, the peak brain shape seems to be around the mid twenties or so, or, or, or late twenties. After that, you see some declines in abstract reasoning and some, some other aspects of, uh, of the brain. But older adults have an advantage that younger adults don't have, and that is they know more. It makes a difference when you have a large knowledge base to draw from. For instance, if you already know a second language, learning a third language is a bit easier. And this is true for many different kinds of learning. So if you have prior knowledge, it usually makes it easier to learn more. An older adult who has taken learning seriously has also probably developed efficient study habits, efficient learning habits, so that as they're learning something, maybe they can do so a lot more efficiently than someone who is maybe a young adult who doesn't know those techniques or hasn't had as much experience. You've got to take the disadvantages and the advantages together. I'm not going to say that it's a total wash here, but I think that the differences are small enough that it probably doesn't matter all that much. The brain is a truly, truly amazing organ. You can learn until you die. If you have more questions like these, why don't you comment below and maybe I'll answer your question in a later video. Until next time.